Hello my Sock Universe, it has been a while that I have done a video sitting down, however I'm battling a cold, you might hear it in my voice a little bit, and so I decided, yeah, let's do it sitting down to actually preserve my energies a teeny bit. Serie A round was quite an interesting one, because all the big games, if you would like, ended in 1-0 wins, with plenty of controversy, especially on the refereeing side, in there, while all the other games had actually quite some emphatic and big scorelines as well, most notably of course Fiorentina going to let winning 6-0. However, it is the big teams that we have to talk about. Napoli stay top despite not convincing. Inter also not a great performance overall, but they get the win. They are now a true top team that also can win against a Roma team that was spirited, but is definitely struggling under all the troubles that surround the club. We had Juve being very, very, how to say, ineffective in front of goal. Definitely lacking a goal scorer, although they have Vlahovic there, but Vlahovic is not living up to his billing. And yes, you one might say under Thiago Motta, not much has changed. You were still winning 1-0. However, at least they have younger players in there. We also know now that Pogba's ban has been reduced, so he might be back. Although I really doubt whether he will be playing for Juve. I think it looks more like this contract will be terminated and he can go wherever he wants. And then we had a really controversial win for Milan as well. 1-0 over U. Udinese, so many bad refereeing mistakes in there. I think that the red card for Milan was not a red card. I think that Pavlovic, and I don't mention it in the short video that I made, should have given away a penalty. It was a clear hands there as well. Then the two goals that were called offside for Udine, especially the second one, is so nitpicky. Yeah. Not a great look for Serie A overall, and then add to it the dodgy penalty that Napoli got at Empoli. An Empoli team that is really, really interesting this season. There was a whole lot going on. In any case, I would say let's review quickly the games with longer edits of the short video that I've published earlier today. And then we'll see each other on the other side of that, and we'll talk about the situation in the league. The Serie A weekend started out with two draws, first Como and Parma play out a 1-1 draw, and then Bologna thought they get the second win of the season, leading through Otgan in 56 minutes, 2-0 at Genoa, however two Pinamonte goals, the last one coming in the 85th minute, salvage a draw for Genoa. Well, my return to club soccer weekend started out reasonably well. Milan beat Udine at home 1-0 and given that Udine win quite a lot at the San Siro against Milan, this was never going to be an easy game. Unfortunately, I only saw the first 30 minutes because that was the good part. Then there came the red card and I had family commitments and the rest I saw more or less on a live ticker and not really that strong because, you know, it's you want to be with the family. In any case, there was a changed lineup, you know, Teo Hernandez being out with the red card after the Fiorentina game and actually that gave some fresh air to me and I really liked that Chukwese was out there. There was also no Leao and Pulisic, after missing the Mexico game for the United States, was in in the lineup and again made a contribution. Milan started out really well. Pulisic played it over to Chukwese in the 13th minutes, 1-0 Milan. Morata, they also had a pretty big chance to double the lead and I really thought this is going to be an easy win. And then Reinders is sent off because Loveridge is running through on goal and he's crossing his path and Loveridge falls over. The problem is, it was a straight red card. The problem is that Loveridge actually tripped himself and that could not be resolved on VAR. Chiffy, this was not the right decision. However, in a way, kind of, he would make up for it later on. We'll talk about that. Udine, from that moment on, were, of course, the better team and probably should have gotten an equalizer. They actually got an equalizer through easy way, but it was just a margin of side where, you know, shoulder just leaning forward. It's one of those. Gladly, it was ruled out. It goes with a Milan lead into the second half. To make everything a little bit more compact, it was Musa then coming out at the half time, and Milan actually were kind of comfortable for the rest of the game. I even had a big chance when Tammy Ibrahim came on. Had a glorious chance to score the second goal. However, he got his step sequence wrong, and then by falling, he injured him his shoulder. So he had to come off again. Not good, but Milan really th seemed like they were seeing out this game despite a few chances by Udine and then Udine scored deep into stoppage time. Only for the goal to be disallowed by an offside call that is one of those we have to dig really, really deep into the rule book. In the end, it is Ekelenkamp's toe that is offside. The ball never reaches him. However, he interferes with play, so he becomes active. I didn't really know that, to be honest. When I look at it, it should have been a good goal, if you would ask me. Actually, should have been a good own goal. 
also if you ask me but i was more than relieved and that this goal didn't count i'm happy this was an important win over a really tough side for milan to beat which means that milan are now moving back into the top four in the evening juventus barely get a 1-0 win over lazio a game that was very much conditioned by a romagnoli red card in the 24th minute lazio though held it tight and you thought that they might get out with a nil nil draw in the end it's a healer own goal that get you with the win we also have to talk about douglas Luis should have been sent off instead of just giving a yellow card the big question is why are you not better in attack that's one to be answered. Napoli were very much second best at Empoli most of the time. However, they get a very dodgy penalty that Quarascalia then slots home. And in the end, then they see out the win, a win that keeps them on top of the table. But this was a much closer one than one would have expected. After seemingly turning around the season with a home win against Milan, Fiorentina went over to Lecce and beat them 6-0 away from home with Cataldi and Colpani scoring a brace each to make it already 4-0. It was a red card for Lecce in between and late on Beltrán and Parisi make it a very emphatic win. Atalanta get a routine win at Venezia scoring early in each half. Retegi first assisting Pazalic and then scoring the second one himself in the 47th minute. Retegi is in real great form, probably Italy's best striker at this very moment. Ever since Torino were found on top of the table, they have really hit the skids. This time they lose 3-2 at Loli Cagliari, who get the second win of the season. It was a perfect 3-2. They took an early lead. Torino turned around. However, then Palomino and a Coco own goal in 78th minute give Cagliari the three points. Without convincing a lot, Inter get a 1-0 win at Roma, although probably a draw would have been a more accurate result out of that one. The goal came after a comedy of errors where first Pizzilli loses the ball and then Celic also assists more or less later on so takes a great shot to make it 1-0 in the 60th minute. Roma did have their chances, however, with a little better finishing, Inter probably could have decided the game earlier on as well. Inter keep up the pace kind of with Napoli, but as I said, they are not as imperious as they were last season. And in the Monday game, Monza get the monkey off the back, winning 3-0 at Elas Verona, their first win of the season. Mota scoring two goals, first one actually brilliantly taken. Could have been a nicer shot, to be honest. But yeah, Monza out of the relegation zone and Verona probably have to look a little bit further down instead of up. Well, after round eight, we have a top four that very much looks like it could be the final top four as well. We have Napoli on top ahead of Inter, then Juve and Milan. It might not be in this order. And at the moment, it all points like Napoli could actually really detach themselves from the rest because we will have Inter meeting Juve next round where it kind of has draw written all over it. It also has to be said there's already a gap between the first three and then Milan because Milan have been losing too many games. Speaking of Milan, I also didn't really mention that you know Fonseca after the whole penalty disaster in Florence did not play Tomori he did not play Tammy Abraham from the beginning and he also left Rafa Leao and probably he would have left Alteo Hernandez out of the squad I hope he can assert his authority on this locker room because this is what Milan need a united locker room a team that maybe can get a run together and maybe then you can catch all of the others you already won against Inter you will not play Napoli relatively soon and I think Juve is well within Milan's reach at least potential wise whether they can pull it on the pitch is always always the big question behind the top four we have four teams on 13 points with Fiorentina leading the pack thanks to goal difference at the moment Atalanta Lazio and Udine behind I think Lazio will actually take quite some positives out of the loss against Juventus because they really kept tight for a long period of time it was an unlucky own goal and I said it before I think Lazio is definitely the team that I find most dangerous to take away a top four spot of the teams that are sitting currently in top four and who knows maybe Italy get a fifth spot as well. Speaking of the fifth spot that went to Bologna last time around Bologna currently sit Bologna currently sit only in 12th place but look at their record one win one loss and six draws if they could convert this into wins that would be great but it's a little bit Italiano ball and it's kind of funny when you see how Fiorentina is doing his former team he went to Bologna to coach in the Champions League didn't really work out all that well so far but the season is young, Bologna is a talented squad overall, but they are a little bit reeling. And then finally, I again want to mention Roma, they sit now in 10th spot. 
it does not look good. This is a team that was hoping to challenge for top four. The season is over. That much is for certain. They might get into a European spot, but definitely will not get back into the Champions League. And this is rather disappointing. Add to it all the ownership situation and the hiring and firing of coaches at will. And you have a cocktail of hot emotions that is taking down Roma at the moment big time. They now definitely will need to win a derby against Lazio to kind of salvage the season. Now look at the fixtures of the next round. I would argue there are three really good ties. I mean Bologna, Milan, maybe not the biggest name, but given that Bologna and Milan are both Champions League teams, that's a really interesting one played on Saturday. Fortunately not on my birthday. I really hate matches being played on my birthday of my favorite teams because it has the potential to ruin my birthday and I really don't like that. However, on my birthday I'm getting dished up two really great games with Inter against Juve, I mean, that's a top of the table clash, although I have a feeling this might fizzle out in a drop. And then we have a classic in Fiorentina against Roma, maybe not top of the table clash, but those are two big teams and that's definitely an interesting one to see as well. So that was my little review of the Serie A action this weekend. Please let me know what you thought about the happenings in Serie A. Where do you think the league will go? Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.